Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We're going to be starting. Please be finding your seats. We're going to be having a, 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 just a moment of silence together. Got a couple of announcements for us, so if we can gather our, ourselves together. Let's go ahead and bow our heads in, a, uh, in some time just to reflect on God, reflect on his awesomeness, and also reflect on the celebration of the harvest that's coming. And we're just thankful to uh, have a relationship with God and just to settle our minds and prepare ourselves. For those of us uh, who are joining us online, our brothers and sisters, we want to welcome you as well. Let's, let's go ahead and have a time of reflection. God, we are so thankful for you. We're thankful for just to have a time of worship, of fellowship, of honoring you, praising your name. Thank you for working so powerfully in all the world. Thank you for working in our lives, helping us to live a life, God, that we can help others um, follow you, uh, share the good news with them. God, help us just to really enjoy uh, this today. Help us to enjoy the fellowship we're so grateful to have our friends and family here. And we're so thankful for this opportunity. And we just pray that you would bless our time together. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I wanna welcome you. My name is Gio Garces. I serve as the minister here in Shoreline. We have a few prayer requests for you. Patricia Morrell just had surgery and she's in a lot of pain and she's asking for prayers as she recovers. Uh, May Swan also had surgery. She's recovering nicely. Thank you for your prayers. Continue to pray for her. You should have received an email about Jack Shirk celebration. It's on, I think, November 13th. If, I'm, if I, I could be mistaken, but check your email. It's a Saturday at 3 p.m. at the Simi Church building. They're going to have a celebration of life for Jack Shirk. If you knew him and you want to celebrate with his uh, family and friends, please join us on that Saturday. Uh, if you notice, we don't have our, our, our communion cups today. Um, we have a subscription supply of that coming in every six weeks, but we believe our supply is on the on the cargo ships out in the Pacific Ocean right now. Thanks, um, we might send someone out with a sea dew to go get them. I was thinking about sending Orlando out there to the sea dew to go get the uh, to get the communion supplies. We do have enough for next week. So what I wanted to do today was use the taco the taco celebration as our communion meal together. Kind of combine it and that way we can ration off the communion for the next couple of weeks to see if the blockade is open if the embargo is open to get our supplies at amazon.com has, has told me that we may be waiting a little bit for our supplies so hopefully we'll get them soon we just wanted to communicate with you if you're wondering where the little cups are uh, we're going to enjoy communion but we're going to eat a meal after church together so if you haven't signed up there's a table back there to sign up if you signed up already Go ahead and get your stamp. You should get a stamp. This is not the mark of the beast. Do not fear. But it is the mark that lets us know that you paid for your food. Okay? The mark of the pumpkin. Well, well said. Uh, at this time, I want to I want to uh, call you to your attention to Greg and the worship team as we worship God together, and I'll lead us in communion right after. Thank you so much. All righty. Uh, yeah, Dave's handing out books. Put your hands up if you need a book, song book. Wow. Good job, Dave. Got everybody. All right, please sing along with us. Uh, first song we're going to do is a 705. 705, don't you want to go? 705? 705. 705. We're starting on the G. Come on, Okay. All right, 705. Don't you want to go to that land? Don't 
Don't you wanna go to that land? Don't you wanna go to that land where I'm back? Don't you wanna go to that land? Don't you wanna go to that land? Don't you wanna go to that land where I'm back? Nothing but love in that land. Nothing but love in that land. Nothing but love in that land. Redeemed 725. 725. Okay, so this is kind of a call and response, kind of. You'll see. We'll work it out. <laughs> I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, filled with the Holy Ghost I am. All my sins are washed away, I've been redeemed. Well, I went down to the river to pray. Well, I went down to the river to pray. Well, I went down to the river to pray. Felt so good that I stayed all day. All my sins are washed away, I've been redeemed. Well, that's not all. Well, that's not all. There's more beside. There's more beside. Well, that's not all. There's more beside. Well, that's not all. There's more beside. Been to the river and a bit that time. All my sins are washed away, I've been redeemed. All right. All right. Woo well, good morning, everyone. Soon we'll be feasting on tacos. It's going to be an enjoyable time for us. It is the harvest uh, festival for us. We're excited about that. We're excited that you're joining us. We're excited that you're here. It's a little bit more nippy than normal. Thank you for wearing your coats. Thank you for... Um, being here and thank you for those being online, being with us. Uh, a, a farmer would sow some seeds in the ground and then later on he would go back to see what his harvest was and he would collect it. And many times it's a joyful time. It's a, it's a happy time. It's a time to celebrate. It's a time of Thanksgiving is on the horizon. It's a time to say, look, we've been blessed. Let's celebrate with our family. Let's celebrate with our friends. Sometimes you plant things and they don't grow. Maybe because you didn't plant enough. Maybe because you didn't plant at all. And so but maybe by, by sheer luck, you thought you would have something, but nothing is there. I want to talk a little bit about some of the keys to having a successful mission of Jesus. One of the most important things as a Christian is that you remember that we have a mission. That we have a mission to spread the good news. And a lot of the times it's always how you do it. And there's many ways 
to do it. And I'm sure in this group alone, there's many different ways that you feel is the best way. And I hear that. And I'm not trying to say one way is better than the other. Some people like to knock on people's doors and invite them to church. And that's how they got met. And that's amazing. Sometimes you're invited to a Bible discussion uh, from a random stranger and you showed up and it was amazing. Or your friend who you've known since high school gave you a call one day, you saw him in the store and they invite you to something and you come and you're like, this is amazing. And you became a Christian. If you're like me, I was met by a complete stranger. And I was at, and he did a Bible study right then and there. Hello, how are you doing? Right? There's the Bible study. And he asked me, are you a disciple? Are you a Christian? Do you want to get right with God right now? And I'm like, slow down, Turbo. Yes, yes, and yes. But you were going a little fast. And what I, what I wanted him to know was my story. I wanted him to listen. Although he was right about what he was saying. Although it was true what he was saying. I was looking for someone to listen to me. Because I had a story about me that I, that I thought was important to what his truth of the gospel was and how we intersect that way. This morning, I want to read a few passages with you about hearing and listening. You know, Jesus said this in Luke 11. He says, blessed are those, ra blessed rather are those who hear, listen to the word of God and obey it. So if you're here this morning, feel blessed. And then he says something really, really amazing. This is, whoever has ears, let them hear. Well, well, Jesus, that's everybody. Everybody's got ears. Says, whoever has ears, let them. There might be 0. 0.00001 per person that may not have ears. I knew a friend that didn't have a right ear. And he couldn't hear out of that ear. And then there's my dad who's a little older. He can't hear out of both ears. But there, there's, there's very few exceptions. To whoever has an ear, let them hear. It sounds easy enough. It sounds really simple. But then he says this in Matthew chapter 13. Please turn there with me. In Matthew chapter 13, we'll take a look at a couple passages about hearing, about listening, and what it means in the scriptures, and hopefully what it means to you, and hopefully I give you some, some great tools that you can use to have benefits of great relationships. To those in your family, for those that you have friends, maybe a dating relationship, maybe your marriage, maybe the people that you're building a friendship with in hopes that one day they'll become a Christian, a disciple. There's all kinds of purposes for listening. In Matthew 13, verse 15, Jesus is, is explaining that people can hear me, but they don't want to hear me. For these people's hearts have become calloused. It means hardened. They hardly hear with their ears. And they've closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. He, Jesus makes an observation that yeah, everyone's got ears that can hear me, but there's this callousness that tends to creep into our lives where we stop hearing. Maybe sometimes it's because we think we have enough information or we disagree with the message, but there comes a point in our lives where we can become calloused and we can stop hearing God's voice. Or maybe where church has become a ritual where we come to church on Sundays but we haven't been listening for months or weeks. He's talking about those. And, and the Jewish people were resistant to Jesus because they couldn't hear the message because he wasn't their traditional rabbi. He came out of nowhere. He came from the Old Testament scriptures, but they were confused because they thought he was from Nazareth when he was actually born in Bethlehem. Just a simple conversation would have cleared that up. But they didn't want to have a conversation, so... They said, how can the Messiah come from, come from Nazareth? He has to come from Bethlehem. That could have been solved in one conversation, I think. But they didn't listen. They didn't want to hear. Look in Proverbs 18. Let's go to the, to the ancient Proverbs that gives us wisdom, that can arm us and help us get a, a perspective on listening. In Proverbs chapter 18, 
In verse 4, it says, the mouth, the words of the mouth are deep waters. In other words, what you have to say comes from someplace. If you allow yourself, there's some deep stuff in there. There's deep waters in there. There's a lot of things that you're feeling. Even though the people you think never feel anything, oh boy, they are feeling stuff. And they feel stuff. And sometimes you're like wondering, well, how can I get that deep stuff out? What can I talk about? How can I get there? And it says, but the fountain of wisdom is a rushing stream. There's a, there's a wisdom in how to communicate with each other. Listening and creating an, an atmosphere where someone can really talk is so, so important. Because listening is the easiest way to connect with people and build relationships. It's one of the easiest ways. There's active listening which is different from passive listening. Passive listening is what I tried to do to Karen yesterday. She wanted to talk and I wanted to, you know, do things while she's talking. I was doing the dishes, dishwasher. I could hear you. The, the, the truth was, I didn't want to talk to her. I just wanted to hear what she had to say so she would feel better and leave me alone. So I'm doing the, you putting dishes away. I can hear you clearly, go ahead, go right ahead. And then she goes, no, we need to have face-to-face. -face. I'm like, oh, man, who, wa who wants to have that conversation? <laughs> One, you all, you, I automatic, I don't know about you, I automatically, I'm in trouble. I did something on Monday or last Wednesday, and it's finally bearing fruit. The harvest is ready of her complaint to me. So I'm going like, oh, gosh, do I want to have this conversation right now? No, honey, go ahead. I'm, I'm here dishes. I'm just doing dishes, honey, serving, serving the Lord. What do you have to say? Then she wanted to sit down. I, I got to the couch and I noticed it was dog hair. I'm like, I'm like, go ahead, honey. And I was moving the dog hair out, sweeping the dog hair. Go ahead, honey. I can listen. She's like three feet away now. I'm like, go ahead. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. I just didn't want to listen because passive listening is easy. She knows I'm not paying attention. It's easy to passively listen. But active listening, you know they're listening. Their eyes tell you they're listening. They're engaged. They're, uh huh. Yeah, tell me more. Yeah, there, you know when someone's listening to you. If you've been married, you know the difference. If you're dating, you know the difference. If you have friends, you know the difference. The difference is you have to commit to have that conversation. However you do it, you got to commit. You got to make a decision. I'm going to commit myself to this conversation. I eventually did. I, I, I committed myself. I, it wasn't even about me. I was all scared for nothing, you know? <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. No big deal. I could have, you know. But because of my background, every time I was called, it, was, it wasn't an encouraging conversation. It was always a threat, a spanking. So I grew up with this presuppositions of my mind. If you call me, I'm in trouble. It takes practice to, to listen. It takes practice and we should want to listen and we should want to be committed and practicing to listen because you, you build a better relationship with God that way. And you build a better relationship with people that are in your circle of life with you. Listening is very relational. Uh, that's the good news. It's relational and it's not mysterious and it's not that complicated. It just takes a commitment to want to listen. Now, I want to turn your attention to Psalm chapter 18. And I think we, we find ourselves in this psalm sometimes. In Psalms 18, because listening is relational. Great relationships are built on the ability to listen. Show me a great marriage, I'll show you great listeners. Show me a great relationship with your kids, and I'll show you someone who listens. Because listening is so huge. I don't know if you know, but as your kids get older, they start talking more in the, in, the, in the declarative statements. I'm doing this. I'm going here. And you're like, oh, I thought we were having a conversation. Brother, it changes. They're growing up. And sometimes kids will tell you that because they might, you might push back against them. So they're, they're making a statement. They're, they're flapping their wings. What are you going to do? So. Instead of being confrontational, 
I like to ask questions and be supportive and have a conversation about things. Psalms 18. And, and here's my relationship in the psalmist's relationship, and I'm sure your relationship with God. When we're distressed, when we're perturbed, when we're bothered, when we're struggling, when we find ourselves in sin, we find ourselves, we realize we're not doing well, we want God to answer a prayer, a family member gets sick. In my distress, I called to the Lord, verse 6. I cried out to God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry came before him into his ears. God is a very good listener. He's really, really good. He's so good, he even hears your grumbling under your breath. That's how good he is. He hears your prayers. He hears your heart. He hears you all the time. What a relationship this psalm describes. You know, Jesus cried out in Hebrews 5. He cries out with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. You know, I hope in your relationship with God, you can get to a place where you can really ask God for help. Ask God that you have needs and tell him you have needs. It's a good practice to tell God your needs. He may not answer all your prayers when you want him to, but he sure is listening and he sure is considering our prayers. Now, let me give you the other side of the listening scope. Look in, look in Proverbs 18, verse 2. You may find this in your dynamics with people that are, you love deeply. I find it, I have, this, I have this psalm. My problem is this happens in my family, but with my friends, I'm a pretty good listener. But when I get home, something happens to my ears. They shrink. I don't know you, you, but my ears tend to get smaller sometimes at home. I don't want to listen as much as home. But if you want to talk to me, oh boy, I will listen to you because I'm your minister. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm not that dumb. I'm going to listen to you. But when I get home, something gets something happens to me. They shrink. It's weird. And in verse two, fools have no pleasure in understanding. You know how I read that? Let me help you with some facts that are going to help your life. I'm going to, this, my information is going to change your life. Stop bothering me. I want to give them facts and solutions to their problems. But what Karen wants from me is I just listen. It could be a simple five minute call ride to Vaughn's. And she's telling me something, and I, it's an easy fix. But what she's wanting me to do is listen. And then yesterday I successfully listened, I was tempted 18 times. To interrupt her, we pulled into the store, we pulled in, and then it's like, thanks, I just needed to say that. I'm like, it's over. <laughs> it's all I had to do was just listen. Fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delighting in their own opinions. I am fantastic at that. I'm sure some of you are fantastic at that. I'm sure your opinions are truthful. Your opinions are helpful, and you love the person you're telling your opinions to. I'm sure you have the best heart in mind, because I do. I love people. I want to help people in my family. But what they're needing and wanting is something that I'm not willing to give when I'm airing my opinion, and that is listening. So I got to get my ears big, right? You know when kids are small, they don't have ears. They have This is their ears down here, right, when they're little kids? I grew up with uh, my ears were here. When my dad spoke to me, he spoke to my ears right here. And I listened very attentively. So God wants us to imitate him. He wants who hears our prayers. He hears our conversations. Do we want to stop talking long enough so we can listen to people that we truly care about? And people feel satisfied when you're listening. They feel dissatisfied when I'm trying to passively listen to them. Now, in Proverbs 18, verse 13, it's, in, it's the same chapter. There's another observation. This is a great temptation for me. I'm sure none of you struggle with this. But to answer before listening, that is folly and shame. I always find myself wrapped in a more conflict conversation with Jaden or Juliana or, or Karen when I answer before I listen. That feels like an attack to some people. I'm just trying to, yeah, 
win the conversation or I'm trying to change their opinion. Ah, change your opinion of me. That's not, instead of just apologizing, I, the attempt is to change their opinion of how they're thinking, thinking that'll solve it. In fact, it made it worse. It makes it worse. So to listen completely takes a lot of practice. And this is so important because when we're, when we're trying to be great disciples for Jesus, listening is a great characteristic. Here's a phrase that I like to use from time to time. Tell me more about that. If you want to really learn more, you talk to Mio Spencer. She's fantastic at these little, these little things you can say to enhance your conversation. Or how did that make you feel? We'll make a statement of fact. Well, how did that feel when you, when you went through that? That draws them out. It's more, there's more stuff coming out. Tell me more. I never ask these questions when I'm tired because I know I'm not good at it. So it's also timing. Yet yesterday I was very tired, but I should have told Karen, can we talk tomorrow when I'm more rested? Because when I'm not rested, I don't want to talk to many, many, anybody. I'll give you the short answer. That's what I should have done. And this is huge in our lifetime. The ability to listen is paramount to our ability to make disciples. Because when we study the Bible with people, we're trying to get familiar with their story, not just give them information. Not just here's a study, here's a study, but to really get to know them by listening to them, listening to their background, listening to their story, listening to their life experiences. Listening is huge in the disciple making process, because in Proverbs chapter 20, two chapters forward and verse five, this is the reason the purpose in a man's heart is like deep water. A man of understanding or a woman of understanding will draw it out it'll draw it out they'll come out because there's stuff in their heart there's stuff in their life that needs to be drawn out by just very thoughtful considerate questions tell me more what was that like you mentioned this earlier can you tell me a little bit more about that there are some helpful practices to listening When we talk with people, because what that does, it, it starts to build a bridge of trust. It starts to strengthen this relationship. And if you want people to share your values, they, they have to feel like they have a friendship with you. Empathy is the most important quality in listening, having an empathetic ear. People are acutely aware when they sense judgment. They're acutely aware of that. So we want to try to avoid that by being empathetic, by just having that, that heart to listen. Empathy, thoughtful questions, encouraging. I want you to enjoy a blessing this morning. I want you to put into practice a, a very good harvest blessing. Practice with your spouse. Practice with your boyfriend or girlfriend. Practice with your teenagers. Practice with your children, practice with your friends, your new friends, your family this holiday, listening and listening to your family. In my get togethers, my mother is very talkative and my challenge is to listen, listen to her heart. That's always my challenge each holiday. I just want to get, I'm just there for the turkey and some fellowship, but I got to listen. My best times with Karen are when I'm listening. There's intimacy in listening because it builds trust. And you can't have intimacy without trust. And intimacy is just revealing yourself without judgment. I, 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 don't, I don't fear revealing myself to you. There's no fear. That's intimate. You can have that in any relationship where you can be you. And there's no fear of being you. That is awesome. You, you can find that in a relationship. That is awesome because it builds closeness. The Hebrew word to listen is sama. It's a perception of hearing with ears to process information. Let us use our ears because it's Jesus who cried out to God to save him. But Jesus knew if I don't die, there's no resurrection. 
and we're still listening to his message to this day. We still follow Jesus because of his example. We follow Jesus because he listens to our prayers. He gets us. He knows us. He hears us. So I want you to be encouraged this season. And I want you to have success in your relationships. And maybe it's just a reminder this morning to be a listener because God gave us ears to listen. And he has ears that he listens to us. So let us listen to each other as we listen to the voice of God. And as I explained earlier, you may not have a communion cup this morning. We're going to celebrate our communion as we eat tacos together, comida, and have, a, and have a festival of a communion this way. It was actually done this way in the first century. They didn't have little portable communion cups. They talked about Jesus and they ate food together. That's what they did. This communion thing was invented many, many years, years later for, for, for uh, easy of practice. But today we're going to celebrate it until the truckers can bring our package to our, to, our, to our house, to the Amazon warehouse, to the Amazon warehouse, to my house, to get our communion. So we're going we're gonna to ration. Next week we'll have some. And we're going to try to ration out for the next few weeks. And then if we still don't have any then, we'll be creative and uh, maybe uh, bring some crackers and some juice with being COVID friendly, of course. So let's pray for our time. Let's pray for our communion. Let's pray for our celebration. Greg's going to come up and give us instrumental music as we just meditate for a moment on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Let's bow our heads. God, thank you for giving us ears. Thank you, thank you for giving us the ability to listen. Thank you for you listening to our prayers and our, our life. And our life is, is beautiful and we're grateful. Sometimes it's messy, sometimes it's glorious. Sometimes it's happy and sometimes it's sad. But God, we wouldn't take it back at all. We love it. We love life with you, the good and the bad. And we ask you, God, that you would help us to grow in areas that we need to grow in. If it's listening, help us to be great listeners. Help us to really get the message of Jesus out through hearing the stories of people that are around us, God. We love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> glory, 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 hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I my burdens down. I'm so happy, oh, so happy, since I So happy, oh, so happy since I lay my burdens down. I don't sing the songs that I used to since I. Sing the songs that I used to since I lay my burdens down. I don't want the wall that I used. 
contribution thank you for giving to our church and our community and uh, our, our great mission here let's pray god thank you so much uh give us a great time pray for the food god the tacos so they're going to be delicious pray for our contribution god that you're honored with it you feel honored that we recognize you as the giver in this economy we are the life giver the economy giver everything belongs to you and we're just borrowing it for a short time god and we love you that you trust us and train us for that great stewardship mission we love you, God. Be with us this afternoon, this morning. Help us to enjoy the pumpkin painting, the pumpkin, whatever we're doing, the carvings, whatever we're doing today, God. We pray that we enjoy it and have a great time, especially enjoying each other's company. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, first off, it's Halloween. So I want to say happy Halloween to all of you. And we have two birthdays, actually, Woo! right now. We got Andrea Burns. And John. Let's go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Andrea and Josh. Happy birthday to you. But we're going to have a great time today. I don't know if you uh, got stamped yet. If you paid for the taco bar, you should get a stamp and it's a jack-o'-lantern. So uh, Judith, if you could stand up, uh, if you haven't paid for your, or gotten the stamp yet, Judith has the stamp, she has the list. And if you haven't paid and you want to eat there, she also will take your money as well. So, or however way, we have cash and we also have, you can pay online with the credit card. Um, with our Shoreline website. So we have that available to you. We have the taco bar until 1230. So it's all you can eat, tacos, pollo, carne, pastor, and quesadillas. There goes the diet. Yeah. So, I do want to welcome uh, uh, Rodrigo and Nancy. They're here for <laughs> the tacos bring people from all across the land, folks. All across the lands they come from here. They're here yeah. from Bakersfield. So glad they're yes. here. Also want to welcome Dalton Reeser. Thanks for visiting us, bro. Yeah, so um, we will have a little costume parade halfway through eating, and then we'll announce that. And um, if you brought a pumpkin, you're probably wondering why we took them all over there. They're getting prepped because we're priming them so that when you paint them, it will take the paint really good. So it has your name on it, it's there, and it's ready for you to paint whenever you want to. We do have a contest. So on this table, we have three raffle tickets. And so each of you, please just grab one each of each color. So, and it has a sign there in case you forget what you're gonna do once all the pumpkins, when you're done painting your pumpkins, you're gonna put them there on the two uh, tables right there to dry and also to be judged. I'm gonna have an envelope under each pumpkin and people are gonna put their color ticket in there. And the ones with most colors, there's one for most scariest, most detailed, and one other one that, let me see if I can remember. Um, let's 
Lucky, where are you? Oh, and scariest, did I say that? Most detailed, most creative. So, so be creative. We have a lot of paint. We've got all sorts of things to decorate. Have a lot of fun. That's what it is for us to be together and have a lot of fun. If you have any questions, we have the bouncer slide too. Use that as much as you want. We have that as well. All right. All right. Yeah. If, if you're a big kid, if you're a big kid, meaning if you're 18 and older and you feel like you're a kid, just be mindful of the children. <laughs> yeah. Just be mindful of the kids, right? All right. Enjoy the fellowship. Enjoy the tacos. Enjoy each other, folks. I want to thank everyone for being online with us. Patricia, we prayed for you this morning. Uh, hi, Shelly. Hi, Raul. Hi, Juan and Sochal. Thank you for joining us. This is, this is a recorded um, a service, so you're gonna, we're going to put this on YouTube. Hopefully you enjoyed yourself. I want to thank you for being with us online. Love you guys. We're going to say goodbye to you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.